Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Nashville, it's time for Nashville Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nashville Business Radio. We are broadcasting from the JW Marriott in downtown Nashville. Mike Salmon with you. And joining us now is Sarah Fiegel. She's the executive director with an organization called the Nashville Conflict Resolution Center. First and foremost, Sarah, thanks for joining us. Give me a a background and an idea of what the Nashville Conflict Resolution Center is all about and what you do. Glad to do it. Nashville Conflict Resolution Center is what could be commonly known as a community mediation center. It is an organization that provides free and sliding scale mediation services for all kinds of issues to help sort of de-escalate, keep people out of court, keep people out of the prison pipeline, and really give them access to a gentler form of justice. How do you engage with the people you work with? How do they find you? And what are some examples of the types of people you work with? Oh, well... Our biggest partners are the courts, different courts, juvenile court, general sessions court. You know, as as a direct consequence of the last couple of years, we've had an incredible spike in landlord-tenant mediation, for example. We've had so many landlords who were really pressed to the last, you know, the last edge and had to file eviction proceedings. We are trying to help people access justice a little more gently. We would mediate with landlords and tenants to figure out how to get landlords paid and stabilize tenant families without having punitive judgments. And if we could come to some sort of resolutions that that met the needs, there was no need to go into any kind of litigation or, or, you know, have court judgments that then trailed people for years. The NCRC, give me a little bit of about, uh, tell me a little bit about the history, the origins, how it began and why it began. Sure. Our organization was founded in 2020. So we're about 22 years old, right? And wait, wait, you started in 2020? No, I'm sorry, 2000. Two, okay. Yeah, 2000. You said okay. 2020, no, 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 no. 20 <laughs> years old. So wait, the math doesn't work, work there. Yeah, so. no, too many twos in my mind. We were founded in, in 2000, really by the National Bar Association. We had a number of attorneys in town who were concerned about court backlogs. And there was a growing awareness in the legal community, but also in kind of the social justice community that mediation was far preferable than litigation for many, many cases that come to court. And really the court backlogs, the courts do a better job if the cases that can mediate do so that they have resources for the, you know, the more serious things that they need to try. So that we had a a group of attorneys who just did incredible work getting us founded and we incorporated as a nonprofit. And gradually over the years, we have added different kinds of, of case types or programs. So now we do We probably do 700 cases a year, which is quite a lot for mediation. We have hundreds of cases where we help people deal with parenting and visitation issues, custody issues. We work, as I said, a lot with landlord, tenant, and debt issues. We help businesses when there are escalating conflicts among employees. And there's a reason why sometimes HR is not the solution, um, but an outside organization really can make the difference. And we work with neighbor escalations and juvenile infractions that can help kind of redirect energies in a more positive way that stabilize a community and keep people out of a, a prison pipeline. So you're doing great work, but it costs money to do this work. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So where do you find the money to do all this? Uh, well, I, you know, my budget is like a Mm, five-dimensional Sudoku puzzle, right? Uh We have, we're juggling certainly some federal funds, municipal funds, state funds, private foundations, and then a lot of individual donors and corporate donors who recognize that what we're doing is making the community more peaceful and more stable. And if their employees are more stable, their bottom line is a heck of a lot more stable. Right. Well, you talk about a lot of the services you provide, but our audience at Business Radio X is business leaders and entrepreneurs and people like that. So how are you serving that market? A number of different ways, but I can think of of specific cases that we've received. I remember a case that I mediated before I took the helm, and it was with a number of employees at... I'll just say a very, very large company here in town that had many, many floors of a tall building. And several of these floors had people who were somewhat skilled but did a lot of repetitive work. And there were dramas brewing in the break rooms and in the elevators. And, 
you know, of course, this is a company that had extensive HR resources, but at the end of the day, many people are not going to be free expressing themselves to an HR or an ombudsman because they're afraid that other things will go on record, right? And the value of bringing in neutral mediators is that our process is strictly confidential. I mean, it's protected by the courts. It's very confidential. The only thing we share with the referring parties is any written agreement that all the participants have agreed to. So we always tell people when they sit down, we don't work for, you know, anybody. We're here for you. We figure you know your issues better than anybody, and it's safe to put everything on the table in this room because the purpose is to get you out of trouble, not into trouble. So how can we help you shape your outcome so that other people don't get into your business and shape it for you? We're talking with Sarah Fiegel. She's the executive director with the Nashville Conflict Resolution Center, or the NCRC. And you provide lower-income Middle Tennesseans with access to justice and to conflict resolution through your mediation services. Let's unpack that a little bit more as far as who the people are that you serve. Uh, Economically, where do they need to be, where they can apply and get your help? We will help anybody. So you don't have to be below an income or above an income. You don't have to... We will serve everybody. I mean, our our mission is to provide access to justice, and if you need it, we can give it to you. We'd prefer that if you can pay $300 an hour for a professional mediator, you go do it. But if you can't, that's what we're here for. For the most part, our, our referrals come when people have already gotten caught up in a court system thing or a police thing. We're also serving several schools, though, now to try and help de-escalate issues among kids or among teachers and kids before exclusionary discipline has to occur. And again, you talk about serving the business community. If we keep kids in school and on track, the long game is this is going to help all of our bottom lines. And we're helping stabilize people. But sometimes people will just call us out of the blue. Again, uh, and we have relationships with certain housing properties. One of the most interesting kind of tidbits, again, out of the pandemic is that we did so much work with landlords and tenants and big property owners, tiny property owners, that there are now people in town who call us prior to filing. If you know anything about, you know, this was new. This is brand new, right? That property owners will now shoot us an email and say, okay, I've got an issue. Don't want to have to file in court. Can you help us first? And we just do, you know. We are always happy. We have their different businesses where we'll, we'll talk to them. And if, if there's something we can do, the luxury that we have is we're very flexible. So we can tailor services. I mean, at our core, we're providing mediation. But how we, how we provide it can be flexible. And, and, of course, we are able to work through Middle Tennessee because we have, you know, remote and in-person services. Wow. And with the uh, the backlog of, of court cases, especially during COVID, I mean, this is just a great service to provide. Well, especially in parenting. I mean, you think about, you know, there are a lot of, especially like never married parents, right, who are struggling or, or you know, formerly married parents struggling to figure out how to share children without toxic rage entering the picture. And then you hit COVID and you may have different families with different understandings of what it means to be to protect yourself, right? And all of a sudden, kids maybe couldn't go back and forth between homes, and the courts were closed. So where were they going to get help? And we had to find new ways to ensure that those families, that we could provide mediation to help them just, you know, turn a situation into something a little gentler and more survivable. As far as some of the numbers, I'm looking at some of your information here. You are able to provide your services in different languages. Oh, yeah. You, you already touched upon different uh, income levels and, and so forth. The success rate of mediation, is it always resolved through mediation or is it not always the case? Of course not. You're not a miracle no. worker. Well, no, and, and we're not arbiters and we're not judges and we're not... I mean, I think it's actually it's a good thing because we. it is not in our interest to force people into an agreement they don't want. An agreement that people don't come up with themselves is not an agreement that's going to last. And so I would say we have, depending on the program, I mean, some, some issues are tougher than others, but we certainly hit 85 to 87% success. And I would say the true mark of success when I look at our data is among the people who mediate and do not resolve everything, 90% of them say they'd use mediation again. And that means the process mattered to them. 
somehow they felt heard and supported. And even if they have to go somewhere else for a solution, it will probably be in a more balanced and rational state of mind, and they will be able to better construct, more rationally construct whatever comes next. I got you. You're based here in Nashville. Yep. But the area you serve, is it just Tennessee? Is it just the Nashville area? At the Talk moment. about where you serve. <laughs> We started in Davidson County, and we have grown and grown. Um, we're now, I mean, we, we had referral partners, I could just say last year, from 13 counties in Middle Tennessee. And we also, we help out in other counties as needed. But we have a fantastic sister organization in Knoxville, the Community Mediation Center in Knoxville. We are very much, and we have some smaller centers around the state, and in many states. These, these exist. They're kind of the best-kept secret of the legal system. And I, I wish that were different because so many of our... Of is, it, is it because the attorneys don't want you to know? Because they want to get their <laughs> fees. They want to go to court. Yeah, the world doesn't owe attorneys a living, you know. And we partner with them. I mean, uh, but the attorneys should deal with cases that need attorneys. Many cases do. And sometimes we have attorneys participate in mediation. But many, 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 many cases do not need litigation. And, and people can, if, if helped find ways to get through and move forward collaboratively instead of at each other's throat. I mean, the real, the magic moment in a mediation is when the two people who walk into the room saying, I don't want to talk, just tell the other person how wrong they are, right? They don't want to mediate. It's like, if we could have solved this by talking, we'd have done it. It's like, well, okay, I hear you. There's a magic moment where suddenly they start to hear each other as humans. And that's, that's what a mediator has to be able to do, to ask enough questions, to reflect, to reframe, and to invite people to hear each other so that all, there's an aha moment of, oh, you're not the problem. You're another person with whom I have to work to solve a problem. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Well, as we get closer to the end here, uh, you, you talked about you know serving larger areas now. Where do you see it going? Five years, 10 years? What's, is there a master plan? Full disclosure, I also serve um, on the Alternative Dispute Resolution Commission for the Tennessee Courts. And um, it is absolutely our mission to make sure that everyone in the state of Tennessee understands this is available. And that if they ask for it, one way or the other, we're going to get it to them. I mean, even if we're on phones at the Dollar General because there's a signal, right? We're going to do it. How many centers, how, will, how I will wave my magic funding wand, uh, we'll see. But We'll do it. Just help one person at a time. One person at a time. And and, uh, we're glad to to have you here to help try to get the word out about the great work you're doing. For those that would like to find out more, I assume there's a website where they can read all about this. NashvilleConflict.org. Easy to find, NashvilleConflict.org. That's also email. Anyone can email um, info at NashvilleConflict.org. And if you want to be a referring partner or a corporate sponsor and be my best friend, you could also email Sarah at nashvilleconflict.org. I'd love to talk to anybody who's interested in figuring out how to work with this kind of a program to strengthen our communities. Well, one last quick question then based on that. If you're a community supporter or a business supporter and you want to sponsor, what does a sponsorship maybe look like? Oh, across the board. I mean, sometimes people people provide services. I mean, we rack up bills printing and doing podcasting and trying to do video services. Um, We have a lot of people who train as mediators and actually volunteer providing the services. And then, of course, we have people writing the $500, $5,000, $15,000 checks to support events so that we can keep their workers happy and healthy. (laughs) So so that support comes in many forms and fashions and shapes. Yep. Great. Well, Sarah Fiegel, Executive Director with the NCRC, the Nashville Conflict Resolution Center, thank you so much for joining us. Delight, delighted to be here. Thanks. I want to thank our listeners as well for joining us here on Nashville Business Radio, broadcasting live from the JW Marriott in downtown Nashville. Until next time, Mike Salmon saying so long. We'll see you next time here on Nashville Business Radio on Business Radio X.